GFCI outlets, also known as GFCI receptacles, are primarily used to protect people from getting shocked or electrocuted. Now, while that's their primary purpose and that's really the reason why they were invented, there are a couple different uses for these that we'll talk about here in this video. Now, you may have also wondered what's the difference between a GFCI and a GFI? Well, really they're the same thing. So GFCI stands for ground fault circuit interrupter and GFI is just a shortened version of that term that stands for ground fault interrupter. So they're really the same thing, it's just a different abbreviation. So as far as how these work, there's actually circuitry inside of these receptacles that detect how much current is flowing from the hot side and going back into the neutral side. And they're designed to trip or they're designed to stop that current flow if they have a variance of as little as four milliamps. So it's a really small amount of change in electrical current. So when it detects that variance, it trips or it actually breaks that circuit to stop that flow of electricity. This is what prevents people from getting electrocuted and this is what saves people's lives. So before GFCIs were invented, there was approximately 800 people that would die from situations like this and then after GFCIs were invented that number dropped from about 800 to 200 so this is really a life-saving device. And because the circuitry detects the difference between the power coming from the hot side and going into the neutral side, it actually doesn't require a ground wire in order to work. This is why you see these sometimes installed in older homes that only have two prong receptacles, they have two wires in the wall and they don't have the ground wire. And while that doesn't provide a true ground, it does add an extra layer of safety for the homeowners. Now the life expectancy of these is about 10 years, but it could last longer than that or it could be shorter than that. So that's why it's really important to make sure you test these receptacles based off of the instructions on the front uh, to make sure everything's in working order because these are life-saving devices. In order to test the GFCI outlets, it's actually a really easy process. All you have to do is make sure nothing's plugged into it and then hit the test button until you hear a click. And you should normally see a light light up on the side of the receptacle. However, that's not always the case. And I'll talk about the lights here in a second. Once you see that light come on, it should stop all the power flowing through that receptacle, but it's also a good idea to test this with an actual device as well. So I recommend plugging in just a standard floor lamp into the receptacle and making sure that the floor lamp doesn't turn on. You could do something like an old school radio or something like that, just to confirm that there's no power coming through this receptacle. To reset it, then all you have to do is make sure, again, nothing's plugged into it, and then press the reset button and everything should go back to normal. And if you don't hear a click, if everything seems like uh, you know, no power is coming through, you hit the reset button and then nothing still works or vice versa. If everything seems to be working and they hit the test button and everything's still working, then that probably means that you have a bad receptacle and that you need to replace it. Now with older GFCIs, they're actually designed to fail closed, which means that the power coming through the outlets are actually going to still flow into the device, which is really bad because there's no level of protection there whatsoever, but you still have electricity flowing through it. Now with the new ones are designed to fail open. So the circuit is open, which means that there's no longer any current flowing through the device, which still adds that extra layer of protection there because there's no electricity flowing through it. So it's less of a risk that you'll get electrocuted even if the GFCI is bad. As far as the lights are concerned, uh, the lights actually vary a lot depending on the manufacturer. So it's really important to read the instructions that come with the GFCI to understand what the lights mean. For example, you could have a yellow light that indicates that the GFCI is tripped or maybe the receptacle is bad. Also, if the GFCI has a red light, it usually means it's bad. Sometimes green means good, but then again, sometimes no light means that it's good, and then other times no light means that it's tripped. So it's really hard to really go by the lights unless you actually look at the front of the receptacle itself and see what the light indicators mean. Also, if the light is flickering, that typically means the GFCI is bad and you actually need to replace it. Even if you have a receptacle that looks like it's not protected by a GFCI, it still could be. GFCIs are designed to protect not only themselves, but they also have a feature called a load, which protects other electrical outlets that are daisy chained onto that circuit. So if you have multiple electrical outlets in say a bathroom and it looks like only one is GFCI, then most likely the other receptacles in that bathroom are also protected by that GFCI. A good way to test this is to actually just hit the test button on the GFCI receptacle and then plug something into one of the other receptacles and see if they still work. If they don't, then that's a pretty good indicator that the GFCI is protecting that outlet as well. Again, in order to confirm that, just reset the GFCI and make sure the device is working again. Another way GFCIs are used is for outside receptacles. So if you have a receptacle on the outside of your house, it either needs to be GFCI rated or it needs to be protected by a GFCI outlet. Also, these receptacles should be stamped with a WR, which means weather resistant. And basically this just means that they're rated to stand up to a higher level of humidity and moisture without corroding. If you ever have to replace a GFCI, just remember this one rule that the power needs to be coming into the line terminals and any outlets or receptacles that are being protected by that GFCI need to be connected to the load terminals. Now, an easy way to remember this is the word line has in the letters IN in it, which means power coming in. 
and load has an O in it, which means power going out. Now, the other thing to keep in mind here is both line and load terminals vary based on the manufacturer. So when you're hooking these up, make sure you don't just assume you know which terminal is line and which one is load. Make sure you look at the print on the back and get the right one. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.